from Mitradigedan in Trivandrum, working with the um, rural development sector since the <coughs> last like 20 like years. So, thank you. Yeah. My audio group. So, I'll be talking from my experience in relation to skill development and rural development. Um, in relation to skill development, one of the major things which you all know, which I would like to express here is that now uh, there is a radical change in relation to uh, skill training programs all over India, which is um, taking place over the last 10 years, especially in relation to the uh, skill training program connected with industries. Earlier, the training programs, many uh, industrial training institute NGOs and different organizations are running in different different forms. Today, there is a linkage to those training programs which are not that much output oriented. That means it is not need based. Of course, there are uh, many need based programs, but today almost all training programs are industrially linked. We have a number of uh, industrial sector skill council. That is one of the major change which has taken place. So that there is more possibility of employment that we should appreciate. The second point is in relation to the uh, standardization in terms of certification. Earlier various agencies are issuing certificates. When we go for a job, people are really, employees are really in doubt which one is the really qualified one and all. Especially from Kerala perspective, I can tell you an example because a lot, large number of young people going to Middle East countries, they are really worried with the certificates about the skills. But today we have this <coughs> national skill qualification framework, which is a standard one for all over India and also the similar thing is adopted in many other countries. These are the two things which are making a radical change in India that is very good at all, in general. Secondly, now the one of the objectives as uh, Professor Prabhu was uh, telling the the, the role of uh, STAR Forum and also the leading NGOs is that how we can reach out to the unreached people. That is the most. In relation to that, there are a few problems. I just want to highlight those problems for discussion. Because at the moment, the new ministry has formed, NSDC has come up, many sector skill council, but that is also not reachable to many NGOs. As, uh, Chaitanya was telling some of the institutions are very happy, some of the institutions are not at all happy. It is not easily accessible for NGOs. Earlier we used to conduct a number of training programs, all are short term training programs and for short uh, number of uh, people. But today they said you are supposed to train 10,000 people. It is not possible as far as the NGOs are concerned. How we can join them? That is one of the things which we have to discuss. Because now many people are coming, uh, approaching NGOs for outsourcing the, the training programs. How we can join in terms of uh, uh, providing the beneficiaries, trainees and all those things. But we don't know how to link with them. That is number one. In relation to that, there are a few problems which I wanted to highlight, especially from the perspective of Kerala. There is a dual challenge which we are facing. As well as Kerala, you know, it is a highly literate state and uh, many of the people are graduates. Uh, we have actually, the, there is no um, school dropouts. In fact, I would say there is no school dropouts. And most of them are graduates. At the same time, uh, and they are really unskilled people. They are graduates, they are educated, there are many number of law graduates. But they are unemployable and uh, they are not skilled to do any job. At the same time, there are a number of uh, opportunities out there. There is need for uh, skilled employment from the part of the industries where we cannot supply to such educated people. Even in the case of Kerala, you know, there are 3 million workers from uh, North Indian states like Bihar, Assam, Orissa, and are working in Kerala. At the same time, there are thousands of educated people unemployed in the state of Kerala. It's connected with status and many issues. There is no time to discuss all those things. But generally I will say that the perception of the people is that they are uh, approaching the skill training programs or skill education only then when there is no option in the formal sector. People are uh, rejected admission in the universities or other uh, professional sectors, then only they are thinking. 
So there are so many such educated people who are unemployed. What I have seen in Kerala generally as a sociologist, what I found is that at the age of 20, a person in Kerala becomes a graduate in India also, and the 22 one becomes a postgraduate. Then he study up to 30 years for a public service commission exam, competitive exam. He spent almost 10 years. In Kerala, in every Punjab, we have a centre called the PSC coaching centres. That means coaching centres for competitive exams. So they are spending the 10 years to study, to write the competitive exam. The, the most productive period is wasted. And another thing is that there are many engineers and agriculture graduates, they are also studying and writing this exam. They become bank employees or in government employees. What they studied and what they are doing is also different. This is one of the issues, same case with many other states also. One of the things we have heard is how we can integrate our formal education with the technical education. Of course, there are certain cases. It started at the school level. In some of our model schools, they started the technical vocational education from the 9th standard onwards. It used to be linked with other institutions also. In Mitra Nikhedan, the my institution is started by Mr. Vishwanathan. He was the student of Shardhi Nikhedan. What he started is, he started a school from the beginning onwards. Every Saturday is set apart for a vocational training program for the children from the age of 10 onwards. In the farm sector as well as the non-farm sector. Most of them are tribal students. Normally they don't go at the university level. So they are turning to the, they are having a taste to the skill training programs and they gradually after 10th class or 12th class joining for the um, technical training programs. So this type of uh, integration with formal education and uh, technical education is required in the rural areas. Maybe we have a lot of examples, models at the urban areas and all, but rural areas, this type of integration is required. This is one of the points I would like to highlight. Secondly, you know, we have a, more than 90% of the, our workforce is in unorganized sector. Suppose, let me, if I take the case of in Kerala, there are people working with coconut fiber, people working in the cashew nut industries, people working in the food processing industries, or many, many people are working in the unorganized sector. Those are not mapped under this, uh, our new NSPC skill training programs and all. There are a lot of such skilled areas to be identified. Their skills has to be upskilled. Their skills has to be certified. And if they, they, there should be an opportunity for vertical mobility. This is another area in which uh, we, the forums or uh, NGOs, can work and contribute. Because uh, these people, uh, NSDC, cannot penetrate into the rural, uh, lower level areas. These are some of the unreached areas where we have to reach. And the third point which I would like to highlight is the participation of women in the workforce. If I take the case of Kerala, uh, as uh, our uh, friend uh, Chaitanya, Yogesh was telling, the girls continue to study until they get married. There are many number of housewives who are all graduate, postgraduates and even law graduates doing nothing. Of course, there is an indirect benefit. They all focus on the education of their children, definitely. Uh, but on the other hand, they are not contributing in the productive sector. For example, the statistics shows during the period from 2004 to 11, it says that uh, participation of women coming down from 33 percentage to 26 percentage in rural areas. I mean work participation. In the urban areas from 17 percentage to 15 percentage. That means work participation of women is coming down. And this is so in the case of rural areas also, even educated women. How we can bring these people in the technical training field and uh, contribute to the economic growth of the rural India. That this is the second area in which we have to think, especially in the how we can bring these women in the non-traditional sector. They are of course working in the traditional sector. In Kerala, we have a lot of experience through Kudumbasri. There are a lot of developments. There is no time. Last conference I mentioned about this. But still I will say that there are a lot of social exposure, social change, social development taking place. But economic development has not taken place to that expected level because 
Uh, our women are not skilled in many technical skills, but they cannot market their products. That's another major challenge. Then in relation to the training programs, as I mentioned, there are many agencies are involved in various training programs. But I will say that they wanted to increase the number of people who attended the training program, but the quality of training is neglected. This is one of the important points. The quality of training is <coughs> if 100 persons are trained, uh, we are not very sure about 20 people are working in that sector or they are continuing. Maybe in, in, in for the sake of the project or some other things, uh, they are completing their target, but it, they are, we are not achieving the target. This is another point. Then in the relation to the entrepreneurship dialogue, which you all know that, you know, the number of entrepreneurs Enterprises coming in Kerala, I don't know about other state that level, is actually coming down. That is one of the reasons is the wage rate is very high there. Because the minimum wage in Kerala now is 500. It goes from 500 to 1000. So any work a person take up, it, he or she should get at least 500 rupees per day. That is why there is a lot of migration from north to south, especially in the state of Kerala. So that is one of the reasons why there are no enterprises or limited number of enterprises. Secondly, we do have a lot of local resources available, especially fruits, vegetables, including rubber. For example, Kerala is the state where we cultivate a lot, large quantity of rubber. All these rubber as raw material we are selling. We are not making any value added products. Nobody is interested and they just want to sell it and get the money, ready income. So here there are problems related to market and other market wage rate and all. This is some of the areas also we have to focus, especially in terms of micro enterprises utilizing the local resources available. This is applicable to all over India. Then uh, recognition of prior learning. Of course, under NRTC there are a lot of programs and schemes which uh, recognize, certifies the prior, prior learning. This is very important in the unorganized sector. In uh, all over India there are in the traditional sectors where uh, Lots of people working, as I have mentioned earlier, also this prior learning certification is also important uh, areas where the NGOs can focus. Then another thing is infrastructure. If you look at the training centers in rural areas, the infrastructure available for uh, modern training programs are very less. Why these NGOs are coming back or uh, they have dropped? their training programs are because when we are trying to link with NSDC or any other web certifying agencies, our infrastructure is not to that level. Maybe we may not be in a position to invest to that level. So the local area, the, the organization at the local area facing is infrastructure, especially in terms of equipment as well as in terms of manpower. We don't have that much qualified manpower in the rural areas to impart such a quality skill training programs. Then I would like to share one example, so one example in Mitradik is how we are doing the training programs from the, the last, over the last 30 years we work as training come production centers. All our centers are training come production centers. We have bakery, it's a bakery training come production center. Fruit processing unit, it's a training come production center. A pottery unit, it's a training come production center. We have more than some 20 training come production centers. We survive and sustain like that. But when the certification issue comes, we have problems in certain centers and certain centers there is no problem. However, we are able to uh, provide employment as well as given training. That is how we are sustaining for the uh, last uh, 30 years. But currently, we try to link with the NSDC related things. Fortunately, as he rightly mentioned about agriculture, that is one of the areas where we have to focus. We work with ASKI, Agriculture Skill Council of India. In Mithrindigayan, we have a KVK. Case. Trivandrum KVK is run by Mithrindigayan. So we are accredited for giving trainers training program, as well as we are giving training in horticulture, agriculture, certain selected areas. Uh, we are working with the ASKI, Agriculture Skill Council of India. Then other program, uh, problem related to skill development is that I told you that we have about this uh, 30 lakh workers working in Kerala from other states, some of them are skilled and most of them are unskilled. We don't know how to train them, scale them, uh, upgrade, upgrade their skill and certificate. It's a big problem. 
That is the case in uh, many other places also. I have seen in Bangalore one example, there is an organization called Samba. They are working with the migrated workers and they are working with their education, training, certification and all those things. These are the few things I would like to mention here. One more thing I will add and uh, I will uh, conclude my presentation. That is, uh, I was uh, running a college called People's College. It's a community college. It's a Danish model community college. The idea is to provide need-based education for the skill training program to the village people. So in Kerala, as you know, that uh, the number of drop-offs are very less and there are no more people coming for uh, training programs. Then we link with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences because they have a school of vocational education and they have a new program called UGC approved program called VIVO, Bachelor of Vocation. So that we have introduced because that suit to our uh, vision also because it is partly uh, technical training based and partly academic based. That uh, three year vocational training program we have initiated in the field of agriculture. There are so many students uh, especially those who studied in vocational higher secondary school in agriculture, they are joining the program. We use our Krishi uh, and Kendra for imparting them skill development. So these are the new programs in which I think we NGOs also need to change. Otherwise we cannot sustain and we cannot support to this uh, economic growth in that country. But this is what I just wanted to uh, present in front of you. These are some of the problems and some of the areas in which we can work. Thank you. Question on the training come production center. Uh, how do you make them viable? Earlier even NABARD used to support training come production centers. So what are the key factors contributing to its viability? The key factor is production. Production, for example, pottery. Let us, or a bakery, let us say that. We are producing products and marketing it in the local market as well as in Timandra market. At the same time, during that process, the students' trainees all get trained and the income from the producers that sustain the unit. Actually, at the moment, how we do is, uh, I am very happy if it is no profit, no loss basis. Because training is taking place, employment is given for at least four or five people in each unit. So, marketing the products is the way which we sustain the training of production. Here is one question. Hmm. Hmm. No, you, you can ask Malayalam or English, I will explain the problem. He is from Kerala. When they do a check, we work in the form of NSDC, NSQF level check. Uh,
and uh, we, we are giving the diploma certificate. When we complete the second year, we are giving the advanced diploma certificate. When we complete successfully complete the third year, then comes on the degree. So it is not compulsory that one has to complete the whole graduate But we also <laughs> didn't appreciate that it is a higher education in the vocational sector. That is also required because those students also can appear all other exam like any other academic graduate person. The change, I believe it is a positive thing. Last time you were telling defined gas for your, you have to define the defined biogas for automobile. Last meeting, you know, developed biogas for automobile. Biogas for automobile. Okay, okay, let me, let me talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I have been feeling that one of the problems is getting in. Uh, actual production is what to do with the waste that training generates. Okay, the largest cost in any skill development is not the cost of the teacher or the workshop or even the salary being paid to the training. The training makes mistakes, that's why we are training him and he spoils their product. So you are saying you are running a production come training center. What happens to the products that are spoiled? Do you sell them? We, we sell them. Right. Even in our, uh, you know, in our audited account, we have found a word for that because there should not be any income tax satisfaction. We used to get disposal of trading goods. Disposal of trading goods. That means it's not a highly finished goods. But of course, the training start, training start with helping the master craft man. You know, it goes like that. Thank you. Thank you.